So now let's dive into some key foundational elements that you'll need to understand throughout this course. Now the position in this picture is known as the anatomical position. It's used to describe the positions of anatomical structures as well as give positions of these structures in relation to one another and the body as a whole. The same terminology is used no matter what position you're in. So for example, you could be standing, sitting, lying face up or prone. So let's look at what it entails. Well, the anatomical position refers to the body in a standing position. And they say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, this rings true here. The head and the eyes are directed forward, which is called anteriorly, and the upper limbs are adjacent to the sides with the palms facing anteriorly as well. The lower limbs are close together with the feet parallel and the toes pointed anteriorly. Anatomical descriptions are based on four imaginary planes called the median, sagittal, frontal, and transverse planes, and they intersect the body in the anatomical position. So knowing these body planes is necessary to understand the upcoming anatomy content and also when you're looking at MRI or CT scans as you're able to view the body in all of these planes. The sagittal plane is also known as the median or mid-sagittal plane. It's the vertical plane that divides the body longitudinally into right and left halves. Any plane parallel to the median plane is called parasagittal or simply a sagittal plane. Interestingly, the median plane of the hand is on the third digit, whereas the median plane of the foot is on the second digit. So the frontal or coronal plane is a vertical plane passing through the body at right angles to the median plane. It divides the body into anterior or front or ventral and posterior, which is back or dorsal parts. The coronal plane of the foot is exactly where you'd expect it to be dividing the foot into anterior and posterior parts. Transverse planes are horizontal planes passing through the body at right angles to the median and frontal planes, dividing the body into superior upper or inferior lower parts. Radiologists refer to transverse planes as transaxial, which is commonly shortened to axial planes. This is evident in the abbreviation CAT or CAT for computerized axial tomography, now shortened to CT. Since the number of sagittal, frontal, and transverse planes is basically unlimited, a reference point, usually a visible landmark or vertebral level, is necessary to identify the location or the level of the plane, such as the transverse plane through the umbilicus or the transverse plane through the T4 vertebral level. Sections of the head, neck, and trunk in precise frontal and transverse planes are symmetrical, passing through both the right and left members of paired structures, allowing for comparison. So here's an example of how these views can be used in clinical practice. Here we see a chest x-ray taken from the frontal coronal plane. You can see how this compares to our previous slides of the coronal plane in the anatomical position. The blue square over the trunk outlines the area being imaged. When presented with a chest x-ray, the first thing someone has to do is determine the view, that is the position of the patient and the machine, and thus the trajectory of the rays relative to the patient. Chest x-rays can be posterior anterior, PA, lateral, or anterior posterior, AP. These three terms refer to the patient's position and therefore tell you the direction of the x-ray beam that it travels through the body to the receptor. In this case, the chest x-ray is being taken in the coronal plane, specifically the posterior anterior position, so that when the image is projected, it's as if you're looking directly at the patient. Whenever possible, the patient should be imaged in this upright PA position. AP views are less useful and should be reserved for very ill patients who can't stand erect or turn around. In this image, we also see an MRI of the abdomen. In the sagittal view, again, you can see how this compares to our previous slide of the sagittal or lateral plane in the anatomical position. The blue square over the portions of the trunk and the abdomen outline the area being imaged. Here we have a transverse or axial CT image of the abdomen just like with a chest x-ray, the image projected is the one you would envision if you were standing at the foot of the bed and looking at sections of the patient from that perspective. Now let's take a closer look at the anatomical position and some of the reference points you'll need to know specifically in the thorax and the abdomen. The first directional term we're going to be talking about is the anterior or ventral. And as you can see in this illustration, anterior indicates that the structure or body part in question is towards the front of the body or in front of something. 
Of course, if we have a specific term for towards the front or in front of, we must have another term which means the opposite, and that word is posterior or dorsal. Both the thorax and abdomen also have a posterior wall. Now the next directional terms are proximal and distal. Proximal usually refers to a structure or body part closer to the trunk or the body, and distal indicates a body part that is away or furthest from the trunk or the body. You'll most often see these terms used in the context of the upper and lower limbs, which you'll cover in depth in the MSK lectures. This terminology will become more familiar with you as you progress through each section. Now our next term is one that sometimes creates a bit of confusion, so take special note of it. So median generally refers to the midline, which is a term used to refer to an imaginary line down the middle of the body that splits the body into equal left and right parts. We saw this as we discussed the median or mid-sagittal plane. Median can also be translated to middle. Medial is a term often confused with median, and it's used to refer to something located close to the midline or when one part is closer to the midline than another. For example, the hilum or the root of the lung is on its medial side. The opposite of medial is lateral, and it's a term used to describe when a body part is situated towards the side of the body. So in the abdomen, there's a lateral abdominal muscles like the obliques. So don't worry, all these terms will become very familiar as you progress through the thorax sections. Our next term, superior, is used to refer to the upwards or towards the head. For example, we can say that the heart is superior to the stomach. And of course, if there's an up, there must also be a down. And that term we're looking for there is called inferior, and it refers to a structure which is downwards or towards the feet, also known as sub. So the converse of the previous example would be that the stomach is inferior to the heart. So with all that covered, let's do a quick review. Anterior and posterior mean front and back. Median denotes the midline of a structure, while medial means closer to the center and lateral means away from the center. And superior means nearer to the head, while inferior means nearer to the feet. Thank you.